Hello Explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going through my journey of making something running in Kubernetes shut down gracefully. And the problem I had was that we were running some work that we got from a rabbit MQ cluster and where I fetched the work, did some work and then reported back to different agents. And sometimes these agents got the message that work was started but never completed, so I knew that something was up. I'm still not ensure that this works. I'm just gonna go through my journey of trying to fix this issue over weeks because it actually is something that happens sometimes and when it happened, I knew something is still wrong, so I had needed to look into it. So let's jump over to some code here. First off, we are going to talk about the Docker file, the Docker image file. And in this case, we built some Docker and usually you have something like this, where you run a command Java jar, my application for instance. And in that case, if you send a kill signal to that application, it will work with the setup where you listen for a kill signal and then gracefully shut it down and it will wait for you until it's actually done. Uh, in my case, I had the problem that I had a lot of different variables and my startup script was a little bit more involved. So put it in, in this command would be very hard. So I had this setup where I copy a start script over to the image, I make it runnable and then start that script. And in this case, the kill signal will be sent to this script. And after some while when I was thinking about this, I realized that this script will not send the kill signals to my application. So I needed to fix that. So I searched around on the internet a bit and I came up with this little script. So here we have some function which will terminate our current job. It will send a terminate signal to the application. Uh, with the specific child process ID. And then we have this trap sig term. Uh, so when this bash script is getting the sig term um, command, it will take that and then send it through to this function up here. Then we will start our application here. And then I had this where I put the, the last process ID into child and then I will wait for that child. So that script should have worked and when I tried it locally it actually sent the signal through and everything worked and perhaps this setup here could have worked if we had something like bash and then dash c here that might be have been a solution to this problem to send the signal through. But while I was looking through this and trying to figure out to find a way to solve this issue, I found another very interesting setup for your Kubernetes cluster. And that is if your Kubernetes cluster is need to shut down an image, it will do two things, or one of two things. It will either send the term, term signal to the application, or it will run a pre-stop lifecycle event. So this is what I actually ended up doing. I have this termination grace period up here. It was set actually to 60 seconds. And as I talked about in an earlier video, I wanted to wait five minutes in order to be sure that the application actually was done with the work. So I put 10 minutes here instead. And then down here in the lifecycle event for this specific specification. So the, specific, the specification for the image. Here I put uh, this little script. I run the shell script. Uh, and uh, run kill java. So this will 
kill all Java processes in this Docker image if you have multiple of them and you don't want to shut them down. But then again, why would you not want to shut them down if you're shutting down the Docker image? Yeah. So I, I kill all the Java processes because this is a Java application that is running. Then I run a while loop here waiting for the Java process to have been killed and it actually has stopped. So the kill all command with zero, it will not send any signal. It will just check if the signal, uh, if the Java process is alive. So in this case, I will get a true here until the Java process is dead. And then I will sleep for one second and then when it's done, it's done and uh, it will release the process. And if this should for some reason fail that the Java process is not killed within the 10 minutes, it will be gracefully uh, terminated then instead. And this little script here was actually copied from a very similar script where you used uh, did this for Nginx because Nginx you run a stop signal to Nginx and it cleans up buffers and handles all the last parts of any call to the web server and then when it's killed so you will look for kill all the Nginx server you can then gracefully shut down your docker image. So this was my little journey into how to gracefully shut down my Docker images. I hope that you found this interesting. Uh, have you had any problems like this and had any other solution to this problem? Leave that down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues and Last week was probably one of the worst weeks when it comes to house appliances uh, going broke. And I thought, well, at least I have my health. And this week I feel a little bit iffy. So I really hope that you are keeping safe and feeling well out there. And I really hope to see you in the next video.